Christ gathering. Join us on Praise the Lord from St. Joseph, Missouri, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teaching to encourage and inspire and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor John Arcovia of the Pentecostal St. Joseph here in St. Joseph, Missouri. And we're so honored today to once again be hosting this Praise the Lord TBN TV 16 show. Today, we have an exciting time in store for you. We have some wonderful guests with us today. Once again, our show is based around the God of wonders, the God that performs miracles, signs, and wonders in this hour. And truly, God is not dead. He's alive. Amen. Today we have with us Carol and Priscilla McGruder. Carol and Priscilla McGruder were nominated for the GMA Song of the Year, I've Just Started Living, were awarded Cash Box Music City News Award, News Award Gospel Newcomer of the Year, nominated for Southern Gospel Music Award Songwriter of the Year, Priscilla has been the female vocalist of the year. They've recorded over 20 projects. Number three, they've had three number one ch chart songs written, 10 top 40 releases in the past few years, but especially ever since God has healed Priscilla McGruder of cancer. Their entire focus has been ministry and sharing the good news of what God can do to those who do believe. They believe in the power of the blood that was shed on Calvary. We're so glad that we have Magruder's with us today. We also have another guest with us today. It's Jonathan Suber from Alexandria, Louisiana. Jonathan Suber has been involved in international ministry for over 20 years. He's the son of a missionary parent to West Africa. He began his own ministry, the call of God, at the age of 14. He's ministered on five continents as a pastor, missionary evangelist, focusing on deliverance and healing in the name of Jesus. Jonathan is married to Stephanie Suber for 17 years, has authored two books, and written over 40 praise and worship courses his wife has. They began Suber Ministry uh, Group in 2004, and they live in Alexandria, Louisiana, with their three children. We're so glad we have today Carol and Priscilla Magruder and Jonathan Suber with us, and I know you're going to enjoy this show today. God's going to bless you. God's going to minister in a mighty way today. We already feel his anointing here on this set today. Today, our first song is going to be ministered by Carol and Priscilla Magruder. God bless them as they minister in song. Just begun to live. My life has new meaning since I learned He forgives. I never thought it could happen just like this. It's too good to be true, but it is. Sometimes I have to pinch myself to prove it's not a dream. This sure feels like the real McCoy, not just some made up scheme. This way of life I'm living beats all I've ever seen. My friends all think I bet the farm on this. It's too good to be true, but it is. It's too good to be true, but it is. Ever since he found me, I've just begun to live. My life has new meaning since I've learned. He forgives. I never thought it could happen just like 
Yes, it's too good to be true, but it is. Woo. I feel a hallelujah down in my soul. I know he's good. Well, I came to him with nothing. That's all I had to bring. He did not try to bargain. He offered everything. Life made me a pauper, but God made me a king. I never thought I'd find a deal like this. It's too good to be true, but it is. It's too good to be true, but it is. Ever since he found me, I've just begun to live. My life has new meaning since I've learned he forgives. I never thought it could happen just like this. It's too good to be true. But it is, yeah, it's too good to be true, but it is. Praise the Lord, it's too good to be true. Every time I, we think about what the Lord has done for us. Thank you, Carol and Priscilla, for that wonderful song of ministry. Well, today we have Jonathan Super back with us. I've known Jonathan Super for quite some time. And Jonathan, I know you've got a book right now that's hot off the press. Today, Matter of fact, it's, it's being today. printed today. today. Yes. That book is Deliverance, Dominion, Dominion Prayer. Dominion Praying, yes. Why don't you tell us a little about that book? Well, I focused for years. When I was here a few months ago, we talked about kind of how the Lord started things. I was 14 and saw my first blind person healed and, and dealing with relational prayer and dealing with more the intimacy of friendship with Jesus. And I've been dealing with that for several years. And the Lord began to tell me, that once you have the intimate encounter with the Lord and the friendship factor, then you begin to go more into the power factor. A lot of people focus more on the power factor. First, I kind of have it in reverse. I have the friendship factor, and now we're going into the power factor, dominion and authority, how to pray in the Spirit, taking dominion, your family, your finances, your health. And it's amazing just, just in, in people that have read the book or that are hearing about the book or the tape series that, that is from the book, uh, miracles are already happening. Amen. So Amen. today's an exciting day. So I'm sure if folks want that book. You just The number right now on the screen, and there's a website on the screen. You can uh, call our... Uh, the prayer line, 1-816-364-1687 or 1-888-867-1687. And prayer partners are standing by to receive your prayer requests. And you want to be sure to call in during the show because I believe during today's show, God is going to perform some miracles. We're not just here to talk about the God of miracles. We're here to experience what a God of miracles can do. Don't just talk to me about a God that can heal. Hallelujah. I'm ready to believe God for a healing. Amen. I'm ready to see God move and touch someone here today, today during this show. So if you want to know more about this book, be sure to call that number on the screen. But also call in with your prayer requests so we can pray with you that the power of the blood of Jesus can touch your life, your need, and your situation. Well, Jonathan, last time we talked about God of wonders. And we talked about some exciting things about miracles, signs, and wonders. And, and uh, you know... We serve a God that is powerful. Yes, today. And I know there's lots of powerful things God's been dealing with you about. And uh, I know two weeks ago, we can talk about this a little later on the show, but uh, we had some situations in your life that uh, maybe you'll feel impressed to share about. But why don't you share with us a little bit about what God's been doing in your ministry, in your life, God of wonders. Well, one, one great miracle I wanted to tell about ties into what you just said. Uh, two weeks ago, my father uh, passed away of a stroke, 59 years old, 40 years of full-time ministry, and uh, just out of the blue, I was in Ohio preaching at a conference. My mother called me. They had taken him to the hospital. By the time I got home, he was in surgery uh, there in Mississippi and already had, had passed away. 
and I was sitting in, in my mom's home that night, devastated. I was leaving the next morning for South Africa to preach a crusade, and was, uh, my wife and I were leaving. We were prepared. I was in my wife's home, just called the travel agent and said, I can't go. There's no way I can leave. My father's passed away. My mother was devastated. And here we are, and I'm, I'm weeping. I'm sitting in a chair. The phone rings. It's a pastor from Kansas City, Missouri, the Life Church. He calls. He doesn't know my father's passed away. He's saying, I'm getting, I know you're leaving tomorrow. We're praying for you. We're behind you. Their church had sown into our ministry. And I said, man, I can't leave. I told him what happened. Of course, he was devastated. And then he said, well, what I really called to tell you was you remember you were here two weeks ago and I said yes and God moved in, in the way he's been moving everywhere and, and people were healed there was a man that had been born with asthma totally healed there was other situations but there was a lady there it wasn't a word of knowledge it was just common sense she had a hat on and she had no hair right. and she was about 45 years old you could tell it was cancer she was pale you could tell the, the effects of chemo and I, I just prayed for her called her out and said God wants to do a miracle and the Lord moved on her but we had no idea the next Sunday I was back we asked how many had been healed the last week she stood up and the word she said by faith she didn't have a report it was by faith I left the Sunday that my father was rushed to the hospital on Sunday afternoon that Sunday this lady came to church with five different documented Praise reports God. that she is completely hallelujah. healed cancer amen hallelujah and hallelujah we may deal a little later in the show with how the Lord's been dealing with me that things always get worse right before they get better all right and here i am devastated sitting right in now. the ashes of this and all of a sudden here comes this phone call that while you're sitting here weeping look at the miracle that god has done and the lord confirmed to me that i've got it all in control Amen. i hold the keys of death in my hand and this would not have happened if i had not ordained it i know you don't understand it but trust me my, my bishop tom fred tenney always says you got to learn how to trust god when you can't track god you got to learn how to right, trust now. him and depend on him and Praise that god. but that just confirm what God's doing now and it's been happening all over like that you know Jonathan when, when I heard about your poppy passing away I immediately jumped on a plane and came yes you were to Jackson there. Mississippi and I remember I know that might all be a blur for, to you but I remember that night as we were standing in that sanctuary the power of God fell Amen. the spirit of prophecy took off Amen. in the building and God spoke to you Amen. And he said that you're stepping into a new level and oftentimes God uses brokenness to move us into that greater level. Not that he breaks us, but he uses the element of brokenness because yes. life sometimes just comes and, and, and will break you. Life, life isn't fair, but we serve a God that's just, a God that is powerful, a God that is mighty, a God that is able to do exceeding and abundant. And above all, we could ask her thing Amen. according to the power of God. And I feel Amen. the anointing of the Holy I Ghost in this place right now. You know, I feel like right now God wants to touch somebody. Why don't you just move in that anointing for a second you know, here? Well, one John. thing I was feeling is the Lord is, is God is good all the time. But yet Joseph told his brethren what the enemy has meant for evil. God is going to turn it around for my good. Hallelujah. And I don't blame bad things on God, but I do say, okay, Lord, I want you to take what has happened in these circumstances All right. and turn it around for my destiny and, and my fulfillment. I feel led to tell what God's been dealing with me the last few months. Uh, right at the end of the year last year and, and, and from last time, I want to just tie in. I'm a missionary's kid. Uh, spent time as a teenager then my wife and I have been uh, basically all over the world started a church in Calcutta India traveled all over wherever been through a lot of junk like that and uh, we we know how to wash clothes in a muddy bucket of water and, and all that all those sob stories anybody wants to send an offering you know that's, uh, all that sad missionary stuff but we were I, I, I was traveling and you see things overseas you don't see all the time in America we've learned how to be dignified and how to come to church and even though we clap and sing we still kind of keep it together you know overseas we cast out devils almost every service Hallelujah. there's people getting heals cancers falling off blind eyes and all that so you get used to it over there well toward the end of the year everywhere I was going we begin to have demonic activity I'm, I'm not talking about mental illness or someone just causing some sort of disrupt I'm talking about really demonic activity I was in one church all of a sudden here it happened there was this young girl they, they ministered to her she was delivered of demonic spirits I said well just praise the Lord I left 
Went to the next church last night. Same thing type happened. I said, man, this is getting weird. This hasn't been happening in years. Then I go to California. A major case happens one night after I'm through ministering. And I said, Lord, what are you doing here? And when I go to the hotel room, I say, Lord, something's going on. Everywhere I'm going, the last few weeks, we're having a demonic manifestation, a throng opposition, not just in my emotions. You know how that is. You know when hell's against you. But this was physical. People manifesting in the service. It wasn't just people that had mental illness and because there was a result. They were delivered. They had a release. Right. And then the joy came and God delivered them. And, and so as I went to the motel room, the Lord spoke to me and the Holy Spirit said, the angels are talking. I said, the angels are talking. What, what do you mean the angels are talking? And in, in 1 Corinthians 11 and 12, we begin to deal with the doctrine of tongues. And Paul says, if I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, and then he talks about how that in the spirit through tongues we speak mysteries that we don't understand because we're praying in the spirit. The Lord spoke to me that demons are fallen angels and they speak the language of heaven. He said, I have decreed that 2005 will be a year of dominion and restitution. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. And he said, I have declared, I have declared 2005, and the demons are hearing what the angels are already saying about your future. So you are being attacked on the level of your future. My God. And the Lord began to deal with me that the demons were activating because they had one last ditch effort if they could stop my ministry, my anointing, my prayer, my focus, because in 2005 there was going to be a dominion and authority. Now, if I hadn't had that word then, I would be devastated now. My father was my best friend. Yes, I talked to him two or three times a day. Yes. Do I miss him? Yes. Am yes. I weeping? Yes. Am I dreading Father's Day? Yes. Is, uh, am I going through all those emotions? Yes. But have I had a word right. from the Lord? Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, John. Hallelujah. I, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost Thank right you, now. Jesus. I feel the anointing of a mighty God in this place right now. But let me tell you something. Right now, someone's listening to this program. Right now, somebody's sitting back. And that statement you ma made when you spoke it, it was a word from God. Mm -hmm. That was a word from God mm -hmm. today. That you are being attacked on the level of your future. Of your future. Yes. Some of you right now are going through situations, you feel like you're going to lose your mind. You feel like, God, if you don't come through, it's over. God, if you don't do something right now, it's going to be done. I want you right now just to close your eyes and to reach out and catch hold of this word of faith. Paul said that to Timothy. He said, remember the prophecies that were spoken on you, that thou by them might have war a good warfare. Mm -hmm. You might be in a battle and you might be in a fight, but right now, I'm telling you, if you'll catch hold of that word. Amen. And I, I just, I mean, I, I know we're, we're talking, but I feel yeah. the Holy God. I, I want to step aside yes, yes. and let God just yes, right minister. now do something. Amen. But right now, I, we're going to pray a prayer right now, and God is fixing to touch somebody that's listening to this show right now. God is fixing to move right now, Amen. and you're going to catch hold of that word, that the thing you're battling, the, the the, the, the resistance you're up against, the, mm. the, the warfare you're going through, the pressure that you're under right now, that pressure is because you have a mighty future in God, that you're an anointed son and daughter of God, and the hand of God's upon you. And I loose right now Amen. upon in you, the in the power of the Holy Ghost, the, the anointing of this word, yeah. the anointing of the fact yeah. that you're being fought yeah. upon the power yeah. and the anointing of your future. I speak right now. Now, clarity By into your mind. I loose in the name of Jesus, uh, anointing into your system. Uh, I command in the name of Jesus right now, uh, every single dominion power that will try to destroy and come against you to be broken. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's done. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You know, Jonathan. It's not a mistake that we're here today. And I believe that right now, that uh, the ministry of the Holy Ghost in this house, I just want you just to kind of continue in that vein, in that thought of the Spirit, and just go ahead and just share a little more about that dominion power and, and what the God of wonders can do well, there's, for those there's, that will believe. There's a couple of things that, that, that I've been feeling as I've been sitting here. You know, the Lord told the children of Israel, He said, I will rebuke the devourer for thy sake. All right. And I've been praying lately, Lord, for my sake, 
rebuke the devourer for my sake. Step in for my sake. All right. Things always get worse right before they get better. All right. And if that's true, then you can determine the level of your attack determines the level of your anointing. So the greater your attack, the greater your anointing. And if we could ever understand that I am stepping into my future. But here's where we get confused. Because we are being attacked right now. We don't see what God has for us. Right. We don't know what he's prepared for us. So the enemy has already heard from heaven what's going to happen in your life, what's going to happen in my life. Ooh. The people that are oh listening to us right now, the Lord, the enemy already knows there's healing declared for you. There is dominion declared for you. In, in this time of dominion and authority, he said dominion and restitution. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, I'm going to cure disease. I'm going to cancel debt, and I'm going to confirm destiny. Hallelujah. There's somebody that I'm talking to right now. Things can't get any worse. If that's true, you ought to stand up and start shouting. If you've <laughs> said things can't get much worse than this, you're in the safest place in the world. <laughs> you're in the safest place in the world. Because someone said, what, I, I call it the theology of the bottom. The lower my bottom, the deeper my valley, the higher the mountaintop. All right. The deeper the pit, the greater the palace. And Joseph went into the pit, but that only took him to Potiphar's house. He had to go into the prison, before the dungeon, before he could get into the palace. And what many people need to understand is you are fighting demons. You are fighting an attack, not from what's going on in your life now, but the price you're paying for three years, five years, <laughs> ten years down the future. And if we could ever understand Hallelujah. that greater is he that is in me yeah. than he that is in the world. Yeah. God has already declared the end from the beginning. He already knows. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. And someone today needs to hear and to know that if things can't get worse, they're about to get better today. Right now. Amen. Amen. Right now. Why don't you call the number on the screen. Anointed prayer warriors, anointed prayer partners are standing by to take your prayer request. 816-364-1687 or toll free 1-888-867-867. One six eight seven. You're not alone in your struggle. You're not alone in what you're up against. But right now, you can call this number, and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Prayer uh, partners are standing, waiting for your phone call to minister to your need. Amen. You know, it's 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 amazing sometimes. You know, Isaiah fifty-five. His thoughts are so far far yes. our thoughts. I read that this morning in prayer. His ways are so far far. We get it backwards sometimes. Let me tell you, I, I just, there's such an anointing right now on this prophetic word from God. Amen. Well, the angels are talking. Right. They're talking all over the world right now. The angels are talking about what heaven has decreed in people's lives. And if we could ever understand that, people say, well, well Brother Suber, you know, you're operating the prophetic. One thing I've learned is that the simple way to prophesy is this. Whatever the enemy is saying, I just turn it around. Because if the enemy is telling me that I'm about to lose everything, then I just throw my hands up and say, I receive the blessing that's coming my way. When David encouraged himself in the Lord, all he did was remind himself of his future. He reminded himself of the word of the Lord. And if you want to encourage yourself in the Lord, another word for prophecy is simply future events or to foretell right. or another word in our English vernacular for destiny. So if I'm going to speak my destiny, I can just speak opposite of hell. If someone says, Super, you'll never have a ministry, I say, praise God, <laughs> I've got an anointed ministry from heaven. If the doctor tells me I'm going to die, I shall live. The Bible says, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed and not cursed. I'm a son of righteousness. All right. And if we can ever understand how to prophesy, there are people listening to me right yeah. now. If the doctor has told you there's no hope, you need to open your mouth and say, Thus saith the Lord, I shall live. I shall if, live. If your husband's ah. told you, hallelujah. If your husband's told you the marriage is over, he's walking out, you need to open your mouth and say, God's about to restore this thing. My husband's got a ministry and hell's trying to steal it from us, and I speak the word of faith and I plead the blood. If the enemy's telling you your children are going to die, they're going to be murdered, they're going to be imprisoned, you ought to raise your hands right now and say, I declare victory and authority. I take dominion in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The angels are talking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that's, that's, that's a powerful, powerful principle about the spirit realm yes and that is find what the devil hates yes and do that yes and quit giving him glory that's right when you start giving God the glory for everything the hell does to you he'll leave you alone that's right <laughs> he'll start backing up because everything he does you just turn it around for the good of the Lord but you know if 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 hell hates repentance repent amen if hell hates humility choose humility Amen. choose exactly the opposite Back in April, the first part of April, God gave us the opportunity to go to the country of Pakistan, a country that's 
more than 90% Muslim. But I am here to tell you there's a powerful apostolic church that's alive and well in the country of Pakistan. And we rented a cricket stadium. And I'm convinced that hell threw everything it can against that, sta that, sure. that crusade. But she was talking a while ago about demonic possession, demonic activity. And, and a lot of times people don't understand that uh, when, when someone who's demon-possessed, for instance, in these thorough country settings, falls to the floor and is, 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 uh, is writhing or whatever, that's not one demon. You're talking about thousands of yes. demons that are dealing with the situation. We brought two young men from, well, two men from our church, Jack McCoy and, and uh, Roy Joseph, and they'd never even hardly been out of St. Joseph, much less outside of, <laughs> of uh, the, the country. But um, I remember uh, uh, a young girl that was brought, and they had her sitting over here on the side, after, and there were so many miracles during that crusade. More than 30,000 people gathered to hear the word of God. Praise more than 3,000 were filled with the Spirit. We saw more than 15,000 miracles that God confirmed, <laughs> you, performed in that, in that setting. This young girl was sitting there, and, and she was apparently possessed. And I was just ministering, and I kept looking at her. And I just kept ministering in the Spirit. And I was ministering about the power of the name of Jesus. And then just right during the middle of the message, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, now go. I remember going over and kneeling down and beginning to pray with that girl, and she began to, 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 to literally writhe, and, and her left arm literally bent the wrong way yes. all the way up to here. And, and, but right there, it wasn't a battle, it wasn't a struggle, just by the simply calling on the power of the name, the there's, name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be. There's power in that name. And just within a few seconds, that girl's complexion changed. She sat up, began to smile, the most beautiful smile you ever saw in your life, completely Thank you. delivered. Yes, I believe Would you that. talk a little bit more about your experience in dealing with this dimension of authority and deliverance? Well, I think, I think one thing, we, we know that the enemy, that hell operates through fear. We operate through faith. And, and I think, you know, he, he has a good marketing scheme, evidently, because people believe his word over the word of the Lord. And we've got to understand, whose report will you believe? We shall believe the word of the Lord. We're going to believe his report. God's for me, not against me. He loves me. Now, we understand that, that there is such a thing as depression. There's oppression. But there is possession. And the thing the Lord has, has taught me through the years, number one, is, is, is not have fear. Don't make a big show. Don't focus on it. Don't don't try to make build your ministry off all this stuff and writhing around and spitting and all this stuff. Just do it calmly. Do it simply. Don't touch it. Just speak the name of Jesus because there's power. You just mentioned it. There's no other name under heaven. No other name. Given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's hope in the name. The name of the Lord's a strong tower. Yeah. The righteous run there and are right. safe. And so when you understand, I think the simple thing, you can make it spooky. We can make it mystical. But the <laughs> simple thing is number one is that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and he is King of Kings yes, he is. and when you take dominion in the name of Jesus if that person is willing to release now they want to hold on to their devils there's nothing I can do with that they're a free <laughs> agent and it's their free will but if they're willing to be delivered there is no demon that can stand against right. the name of Jesus Christ right amen praise God Power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know, we saw that in Guyana years ago. Do you remember that? We were in a crusade in Guyana years ago. Your first overseas right. trip. That's he right. went with me. That's why I guess he's so weird or something. I don't know. <laughs> he went with me overseas, and we, we had a blast. It was a great time. And, and there was a woman that was a witch. She was a sorceress. Do you remember that, the lady? And, and, and they split us up on Sundays. You went to one church. I went to another church. We came back for baptism. And one thing I've learned about someone that's truly demonically possessed, they, they don't want to be connected with the name of Jesus. And when she put her foot in the water to get ready to be baptized, now, has she come up and prayed? Yes. Had she come up and, and acted like everything was fine? Yes. Oh, yes, I'm going to get in the church. When her foot touched the water, that woman went crazy. Mm -hmm. It was an older lady. 
And, and, and you don't want to uh, make a scene on television, but there was a plethora of voices come out of her. And it was kind of odd. It was strange. It kind of scared me and scared everybody else because that demon did not want to submit to the authority that was in the name of Jesus. And just by the threat of coming under the authority of the blood of Calvary through water baptism, all of a sudden she come through a process of deliverance. And before you know it, they started coming out and she was delivered by the you power see, of the name of Jesus. This, this is important because this, this goes right into the concept, right into the principle that we're talking about today and that's a god of wonders yes and that is you know in this hour sometimes folks would like to just you know push us under the carpet or try to can you can't counsel with the devil no there's no. power it's there's all anointing about it's all the about blood him of Jesus. it's not about us it's about amen. the name and the blood and the word amen it's the greatest weapon in the world. This book right here, there is no weapon formed against me that can prosper. But this is the only weapon I need against. It's the only offensive weapon that we've been given in Scripture is the sword of the Spirit. Everything else, everything else is defensive. And if we, we I, I think so many times because the Lord does use me a lot in healing and deliverance. And, and people want to make it hard. And, oh, how did you, what formula, what method? It's very easy. Believe the word. Speak the word. Speak the name of Jesus. Have authority in the name of Jesus. This is his battle. That's right. He's already won on Calvary. He said it is finished. Amen. He's already paid the price. All we have to do is take dominion. Well, look, when Jesus finished his 40 day fast and the enemy came against him mm -hmm. to tempt him. Yes. He didn't call down angels. No. He didn't call down power. He didn't call down lightning. He simply used the power of the word. It is written. Three times he was attacked. Three times he quoted the word. Yes. And then the enemy tried to misquote the word yes. to Jesus. Turned it around. Turned it around. Left some things out. But you see, when you stick with that word, there's power in the word of God. Yes. You know, I was in a uh, mental institution, not personally. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would just clear that one up. Uh, I was there uh, visiting somebody yes. and was praying with them. And um, I, I was sitting there and just a, a thought, maybe it was a thought, maybe it was a, a word, I don't know, just, just hit me. And that is, you know, in the beginning, God created us in his image. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about the devil, he's a wannabe. He's a big zero. I don't care how big you make a zero. You can make it as tall as, 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 as a Sears Tower. Yes. It's still a big zero. It's a big zero. That's right. And see, the devil don't want no one to understand that he fell. He's a fallen angel. Yes. The devil is not the opposite of God. I'm no, he's sorry. A defeated These folk. little comics about no. the devil and the God. No. He, God spoke him, God spoke the devil in existence just like he spoke a dog yes. or a cat. And he's defeated. If God wanted he said the finger of God I yes. cast out devil. I think it's the pinky. <laughs> the pinky yes. of God. See the devil likes to try to appear big and mystical, but really he's a defeated foe. He was defeated at Calvary. Yes. He was it, Jesus when disciples came back amazed that they could cast out demons in, in, in his name. He said, I cast I saw Satan as lightning, as lightning fall. fall from heaven. Hey, when, when God says devil go, lightning moves at hundred and fifty six thousand miles per second. Wow. The devil was moving yes. when he got kicked out of heaven. Yes, 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 yes. You know, the, I think maybe there was a translation mistake there in the Bible where it says the devil goes about as a roaring lion. I think it might have been a groaning lion. He, he's still hurting when he hits this earth. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how, you don't got to wait a week. You no, don't got to no, wait a month no, and sit around no, and wrestle. No, it's power no. in the name of Jesus. But just like God created man in his image, everything Satan has tried to do, everything true in God, the gifts, the anointing, Apostolic authority, the devil always tries to bring a counterfeit to yes. truth. Yes, yes. I, I mean, you don't got to study the counterfeit. I mean, if, if you're in a bank, they, tr they train you to, to work with bills. They don't hand you a counterfeit bill and say, no. study this. No, they don't. They, they let you handle the truth thing all day long, yeah. and they slip a counterfeit in. The second you touch it, you know it's wrong. You get a feel for the real. You get a feel for the real. <laughs> so the, the, I was sitting there in that institution, and the, the, just a thought came to me. I believe it was a thought of the Spirit. Just like God created his image in man, much of this situation here, not all of it, just some of it, is the enemy trying to duplicate his image in man. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is don't put your image in it. You need to go back to your image being in Christ. Mm -hmm. Live in the image of Christ. Yes. Identify, not with your failures, yes. not with the enemy, no, not with the fine. lies, not with the junk he's putting in your head. Identify with Jesus Christ. He's your true flower. Father, that's where your bloodline goes. Amen. Amen. See, if, if one thing I would, as, as you were saying, it just, it's amazing how the Lord just leads us and ties, ties all of this in. But I, I, people, if they could ever understand 
many people are living with their failures and with their fears and with their past. And if they could ever understand that God has equated your failures and your past into your future, you would not be who you are if the things that have happened in your life had not happened in your life. I've had things in my life, you've had things in your life, but they have had to happen in order to make me the person that God wants me to be. And if you could understand that in the math of God, in the equation of God, is your failures plus God's grace equals your future. Right. And if you could ever understand that all of this is a process not to break me, but to mold me. There's a difference. It's not just to crush me, but it's to mold me and to make me what I'm to be in the will of God for my destiny. Because that's one thing the Lord said. He said, I am going to confirm destiny in 2005. I declare that. Amen. I Declared. speak that. I receive I'm it. going to cure disease and I'm going to cancel debt. There are people listening to me right now. You say, I have no direction. I'm, I, I'm hurt. I'm sick. I've been left. I'm abandoned. I'm alone. You need to stop right now and declare yeah. authority, dominion, and restitution. There's a difference between restitution and restoration. Restoration means to make an original. If I was to break this cup, we could restore it and make it original. But restitution in the Old Testament talks about the law of the thief. Hmm. And I, I've, I've, I've misquoted it before because I said it's payback seven times. No, that's not true. In the Jewish law, the law of the thief, they had to pay back five times. That's restitution. What would happen to people right now if the enemy has stolen things in your life, if this year, 2005, that the Lord brought back five times what My the God. enemy has stolen from <laughs> you, financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, familiar, if God was able to allow you to receive fivefold, five times what the enemy had taken from you, that's what I feel in the Holy Ghost today. Right. God is wanting to give back, not only give back, but wanting to make restitution. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name. I tell you what, right now, and we're going to make a break here in a moment, but before we do, I want you one more time, Jonathan, speak those three words that God has spoken over this year. It's going to cure disease. Cure disease. It's going to cancel debt. Cancel debt. And he will confirm destiny. Confirm destiny. What I want you to do right now is I want you to claim those three words for yourself. Right now. That he's going to cure disease. Amen. Cancel debt. And confirm, confirm destiny. destiny. I want you to lift your hands right now and say, Lord, I receive that word in my spirit. I receive Hallelujah. your healing cure for disease. I receive debt canceled. I claim the promise that the, that the enemy will have to pay, pay back fivefold, sevenfold what he's stolen. And I will, I'm claiming that my destiny now to be confirmed by the witness of your spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, Jonathan, that's an awesome, awesome testimony. And thank you for sharing that with us today. Well, Amen. I'm glad I could come. I feel, you know, after what I've gone through with my father, it's just a joy for me to be able to get up and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, man, I love you. Thank, thank you for you. coming to St. Joseph, thank Missouri. You. We're now going to break away and uh, the greeters are going to minister to us now in a time of ministry and song. God bless you. faced a mountain that I have no strength to climb and the struggle of this journey's left me weak both in body and in mind where I stand to the peak is a distance on my own I cannot reach So this journey of a thousand steps begins Right here on my knees Soon I'll soar like an eagle Rising in His splendor 
just to hear heaven's point of view. I may face things tomorrow I can't comprehend today. Circumstances so uncertain make it hard to find the strength to pray. But I'm living in the promise I'll never leave you, I will always see you through. Thank you, Jesus. So what's this mountain to an eagle flying high from heaven's point of view? Soon I'll soar like an eagle. Thank you, Priscilla, and I get really touched in my spirit, not just by the beautiful ministry, those words, but knowing this woman that just sang, knowing that there was a day not too long ago, the doctors came to her and said, you've got cancer of the throat, and you'll probably never sing again. And she knows what it means to go down to the depths of brokenness. She knows what it means to go down to the depths of sorrow. And I'm just so thankful to see the ministry of the Holy Ghost moving through this precious woman of faith, singing from heaven's point of view. Thank you, Carol and Priscilla, for that wonderful song. I do want to mention before I go into the ministry of the Word for a moment, that Priscilla also has a book. I've just started living, and I know that uh, you might... Uh, be interested in this book, you'll want to either uh, go to the website that's on screen, or you can call right now. Prayer Partners are standing with all the information you'll need for these books and CDs by the Magruders, who you just heard ministry so wonderfully. wonderfully. But prayer Partners are standing by to receive not only your prayer requests, but can give you more information on these materials. And you can call 816-364- 1687 or toll free 1-888-867-1687. Praise God. We've been talking today about a God of wonders. And I just have been feeling the precious anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place today. The Lord is here in such a special way. He's here to touch you. He's here to minister. And I know that already during this time of interview with Jonathan Suber that God has touched you. And I know that he's ministering in a mighty and powerful way. This morning, I spent a little bit of quiet time in our church sanctuary, just talking to the Lord. And he laid on my heart something that I want to share with you now that I believe is a word from the Lord. And I believe that the Lord wants to do something further today on this today's show a God of wonders. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 133, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. 
It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon Aaron's beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. And it's the dew of Hermon, it's the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there, in the place of unity, God commands the blessing. The Psalms 133 is a very powerful, powerful book. It talks about the power of unity. True anointing comes in the midst of unity. As a matter of fact, God does his greatest works in the midst of those who really don't care who gets the credit, but just see, want to see God move and lives and souls touched. It talks about the precious ointment that went down from the beard of Aaron that ran all the way down to the skirts of his garments. And you can always tell when you're truly anointed when it gets down on your walk, your everyday life. Not just a Sinai anointing, not just a, a put-on anointing, but an anointing that lives resonant in your life, an anointing that gives you a daily authority over the power and the working of the enemy. But he goes on to say, in the midst of that place of unity, when brethren are dwelling together in unity, he commands the blessing. I don't know about you, but I want God to command the blessing in my life. I want God to command the blessing of His Spirit, the blessing of His power, the blessing of His Word in my life. And, and, and today as I was just, just, just kind of preparing my mind and, and my spirit for this, this, this uh, day of hosting, I just, I just discerned just the Spirit whisper to me, the anointing of brokenness. We've talked today about brokenness a little bit, but I'm going to go a little further into the anointing of brokenness because I don't just want any old anointing. I want the anointing that destroys the yoke. Isaiah 10 and 27 tells us that. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing that we seek after. It's the anointing that we long for. But the true anointing from God comes from brokenness. And, and I want to look at the life today of David. David was an anointed man of God. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. A man that God chose to do great things for him. A man whose heart was sold out to his maker. And though David had one situation in his life with Uriah, he was able to go through this storm and he was able to, to weather the storm because of the deep character and the deep love in, in his life and the anointing that covered him. And, and upon the life of David, there are three anointings that we're going to look at. And the first anointing I want to look at is in 1 uh, Samuel 16 and verse 13, where the Bible talks about David being anointed king over Israel. In 1 Samuel 16 and 13, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward, and Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. That very first anointing of David was an anointing of warfare. And that's the first anointing you will experience when you really begin to seek after God. When you really begin to reach out for the things of God, the first anointing you will experience is the anointing of warfare. David's first anointing was an anointing to kill the lion, the bear, and then eventually Goliath. When you make your mind up that you're going to mean business with God, you're going to paint a big old giant target on the middle of your life. But I got news for you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians about this anointing, that in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 4, that we don't walk after the flesh. This warfare is not a war for the flesh. If it's just a war for the flesh, we could just do some flesh things. We are warring a spiritual warfare. Therefore, you've got to have spiritual weapons to see victory in spiritual warfare. The weapons the Bible talks about in verse 4 is, the weapons of warfare are not carnal. That word carnal in the original means human nature without divine influence. You see, when we reach a place in warfare where we realize, God, I can't do it without you. God, if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. That we, we, we step aside from just complete self-confidence and, 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 and complete confidence in what we can do, but reach that place where, where, God, I need your anointing. I need your touch. Then you become available for the weapons of warfare that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting out imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity 
every thought the obedience of Christ. So that first anointing is the anointing of warfare. That anointing of warfare will take you into the second anointing. That second anointing is the anointing of praise. David, for 13 long years, from the cave of Adullam to the wilderness of Engedi, David fled the wrath of Saul. David tried to stay a few steps ahead of the anger and the jealousy of Saul, never knowing when the Saul's men might turn the corner and take his life. Uh, but David did not sit back in despair. Even though he knew he'd been anointed king, the prophet had poured the oil on his head. But for 13 long years, uh, he went through what I call the anointing of praise. Uh, and that is, even though the situation's not going the way you want it to go, I'm still going to praise God. Even though I'm not seeing what I'd like to see, I'm still going to praise God. Uh, even though it seems I'm walking through the valley of the shallow of death. Uh, I'm not going to fear evil, but I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to have a praise on my lips from my God. I'm going to walk through the day and I'm not going to let the negative circumstances of life uh, hem me in, uh, but I'm going to lift my voice like David said. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. That's the anointing of praise. Oh, it's easy to praise God when the check's in the, in the, uh, in the bank and when, the, when everything's just right. But when things are going bad uh, and things seem to be going down and you don't know what's going to happen next uh, and, and all you have to trust in is God's promise and word. Uh, when you choose to praise Him, my friend, uh, that's when you become uh, anointed uh, with the anointing of praise. Uh, I challenge you right now, don't sit back. The devil wants you to murmur and complain. Uh, that that's what Israel did. They murmured and complained so much that finally God said, as you've spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Well, guess what, God? I'm going to do whatever I can to speak words of faith, words of confidence. Because if, if the words of the children of Israel could so reach God and, and cause him to turn and give them the negative they want, I want the anointing of praise to fall on my life. And I can rise up in the midst of my dilemma and I can still proclaim, my God is great. My God is mighty. My God is able to do whatever he said he could do. It doesn't matter how bad my situation is. He is able. Oh, right now where you're sitting, lift your hands and just thank him right now that he's able. Let God anoint you with the anointing of praise. Praise God. I want to be anointed with the anointing of praise. You find that David reached a point when finally, when he heard the ark of God was coming back into the children of Israel. When the ark of God was returning to its rightful place. For so many years that ark had been under the Philistine bondage. and had been in a place it shouldn't be. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings 6, when he heard and saw the ark. In verse 14 of 2 Samuel 6, David danced before the Lord with all his might. It's easy to dance when you got the anointing of praise. It's easy to worship God, to let God cover you. The Bible says he danced with all his might. I got news for you. That wasn't the first time David danced. That wasn't the first time David got a little crazy because he lived in the dimension of the anointing of praise. In a moment, I'm going to talk to you about that third anointing. That third anointing is where the true power of God is. That third anointing is where true miracles and signs and wonders lie. That third anointing is where God can work the miracle for you. And we're going to cover that third anointing. But right now, God wants to touch you with the anointing of praise. Jesus, I'm praying right now whoever's hearing this program, wherever they're sitting, that no matter their dilemma, no matter what they're facing, no matter what they're up against, that they will choose to embrace the anointing of praise, to recognize the anointing of warfare always, always, always brings them to the anointing of praise. And Lord, I'm asking you, let your presence break through their dark clouds and the light of your joy move in their life. Praise God. God is so good. And I thank Him for His presence. You know, I've been talking a lot about Carol and Priscilla.
Magruder, I'm so glad they're here today with us on this set. They mean a lot to me because they're an aunt and uncle by marriage, but I appreciate the life they live and what they stand for. And when you get the true anointing, when you get a true anointing from God, you can't fake it. Oh, you, you can try to purchase a copy anointing, but true anointing from God, it always stands out. And I thank God today for the anointing that's upon this one of God. It's about to minister to us in a time of song. God bless you as Priscilla Magruder ministers to us in song. Storms won't last forever The sun will shine again Just over the next horizon Calm seas will begin The Lord is my captain He'll bring me safely to the shore My ship won't go under as long as Jesus is on board I'm going over I'm not going under my vessel sails straight and true of course beyond the blue and when I arrive on that heavenly side Jesus will welcome me in My voice will end Sitting in on Jordan's side Jesus steers my vessel Through the storms of life In the darkest tempest, He is my guiding light. Through waters dark and cold, oceans deep and wide, my Master will bring me safely to the other side. I'm going over. I'm not going under My vessel says straight and true Of course beyond the blue And when I arrive On that heavenly side Jesus will welcome me in My voice will end Sailing in on Jordan's side Jesus will welcome me in My voice will end Sailing in on Jordan's side He's the captain He's on the ship We have nothing to fear Aren't you glad he's on the boat with you? Jesus steers my vessel. Jesus steers my vessel through the storms of life. In the darkest tempest, he is my guiding light. Through waters dark and cold. Through waters dark and cold. Oceans, oceans deep. deep and why say it with your lips my master my master will bring my me master. safely to the other side I'm, I'm going over I'm not going under my vessel sails straight and true of course, beyond 
the blue And when, when I, I arrive On that heavenly side Jesus will welcome me in My voice will end Sitting in on Jordan's side Jesus will welcome me in My voice will end Singing on Jordan's side. Amen. We're so thankful for Calvary. We're so thankful for the power of the blood that was shed for us. Thank you, Priscilla, for that wonderful anointed song about the power of the blood of Calvary. We've been talking about the anointing of broken. Right now, if you'll call the number that's on your screen, 1-816-364-1687 or toll-free, 888-867-1687. Prayer partners right now are standing by, ready to receive your prayer request in faith, believing in a God of wonders that is able to work a miracle for you. We've been talking about the anointing of brokenness. And, and I, I know this is probably not a real great popular subject as far as uh, brokenness. We'd rather sometimes uh, uh, think about uh, a life that's untouched by the world or untouched by events. But the truth of the matter is, every day that goes by, hurting people are hurting. In fact, I believe that's why we are here. We are here to reach a hurting world. And every now and then we have to remind ourselves we live in a world that's hurting. And that hurt doesn't just stop at the gates of, of, of your experience with Christ. It's sometimes that hurt crosses over into your experience. And even in what we would call the church, there's people that are hurting. And we are here, sent, mandated by God to bring hope to a hurting world. And the hope I've come today to talk to you about is what we've been talking about through this whole segment of, of, of the show today. And, and earlier when we were talking with Jonathan Suber, we were talking about how when the enemy attacks you, when the enemy comes against you, he's attacking you on the level and the potential and the power of your future. I, I, I'm grabbing a hold of that word and I'm not letting it go. I'm gonna, that, that's my word for this day. Amen. Amen. And if you're standing there and you're facing something, I want to give you hope and what the anointing of brokenness can do for you. Sometimes when you face brokenness, you can feel like it's all over, that life is just turned on you and you have no hope. But today, you do have hope. Because there's one beautiful thing that brokenness brings, and that's dependence on God. We live in such a self-sufficient world, a world that just depends on me, myself, and I. But I've got news for you. Today, if you'll cross the line and, and, and break the mold and move into that dimension of brokenness or dependence on God, there's an anointing that is waiting for you. That third anointing that David experienced was towards the very end of his life. He'd been a king for quite some time. He'd ruled. He'd had many victories. But then he allowed his life to slip into a period of lack of discipline. I don't know exactly what that David was going through. I don't know exactly what David was facing during that time. But whatever reason, David chose to sin the sin with Bathsheba. And one whole year went by, and I'm sure that David probably thought that, you know, he got away with it. But one morning, maybe, he woke up and the birds were singing and the sun was shining. And big sigh of relief and he thought, I got by with it. But you know what? God had waited a whole year for David to humble himself. And sure enough, Nathan Prophet comes and points a finger in his face and says, David, thou art the man. At that point in time of David's life, he was king of Israel. He could have snapped his fingers and said, get this man out of here. And soldiers would have come and taken him, but no. David embraced the anointing of brokenness. And there David was willing to humble himself, 
pulled his crown off his head, took his, pre, his, 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 his kingly robes off, and he said, I have sinned before God. And there he became acquainted with the anointing of brokenness. Brokenness is dependence upon God. We must truly believe in this hour, and I believe this with all of my heart. We must truly believe and embrace what Jesus said in the scriptures in John 15 and verse 15. Verse 5, excuse me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Sometimes we don't really embrace that. We think, well, I can do something without God. When we reach the place where we realize every day we live, every br the only reason why I stand in front of you even talking here today is because my heart is beating in my chest. And the reason why my heart is beating in my chest is because there is an eternal God that is standing by saying, beat, heart, beat, beat. And the day he says that heart don't beat anymore, the heart stops beating. Every day we live, we live in the full awareness, awareness and confidence that without you, I can do nothing. But as Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's the hope in the midst of your brokenness, uh, that you can turn to an eternal God that can reach down in where your situation is, down where you've become broken, down into your dilemma, and he can reach with a mighty hand of salvation and a mighty hand that can lift you up and use you in a mighty way. The anointing of brokenness. In the book of Isaiah... I read to you in the very beginning that the anointing destroys the yoke. There's an anointing that God has for his church. There's an anointing that God has for those who will believe. That there's not a yoke of hell. There's not a yoke of sickness. There's not a yoke of disease. There's not a yoke of debt. We heard it today. This is the year that God is going to release and heal sicknesses. God's going to cancel debt. And God's going to confirm destiny. I'm telling you, this anointing I'm talking about is an anointing that will bring those three factors of God's prophetic promise and word into place in your life. And my friend, when God destroys a yoke, it don't come back again. When something's destroyed, it's completely removed. And God doesn't just want to remove your sickness for a day. He doesn't just want to re 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 remove your situation for a moment. Today, he wants to turn your life around. Today, he wants to deliver you forever. I'm talking about he who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. When God delivers, when God heals, you are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. And today, that God of wonders can reach right in the middle of your situation of brokenness. And he can set you free. But your prayer is going to be the prayer that David had in the book of Psalms. He said, one thing in Psalms 27 have I desired. One thing that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. If you could bring your life into focus right now. Don't look at the winds and waves around you like Peter did. Don't look at your situation right now. Focus on a mighty God that's able to save, heal, and deliver. One thing, if I desire, if Jesus could become your focus, if Jesus can become the focus of your attention, he can turn your life around. In Matthew 14, God had told the disciples to get into the boat and to go to the other side of the lake. In the middle of their journey, a storm came. The storms sometimes come because you're like Jonah. You're running from God. Sometimes storms come because you're in the will of God. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's not that you've made a mistake or you're out of God's will. You're in God's will. In fact, you're, just, you're right in the middle of accomplishing what God has anointed and purposed your life for. The storm came. And the Bible says the disciples feared for their life. And along came Jesus walking on the water. The same disciples who left everything 
to follow this Jesus became fearful, cried out and said, it's a ghost. Because they couldn't even recognize this Jesus walking on the water towards them. Because their environment had been changed. But Jesus spoke three words to Peter. And Peter said, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come. And all Jesus said was, come. And there Peter stepped out of his boat. I could see Peter. He's a fisherman. He knew. He knew what the water was all about. He's stepping out of that boat. I can see him testing that water. And he takes the next step out of that boat. He's holding on to the side of the boat. And never before in his life has he walked on water. This water that's been unstable, that all his life he's experienced, that it could not bear the weight of a human being. He's standing on that word. Come. And he steps out of his boat. And begins to walk on the water. And today, God's beckoning you to step out of your boat. To reach out to Jesus. To let him become your hope. Let him become your strength. Let him become your everything. And as he began to walk on that water, you know the story. He took his eyes off of Jesus. Began to look at the winds and waves around him. And he began to sink. But the beauty of this story is we don't find Peter sinking and failing. Because even when his faith ran out, Jesus reached out and grabbed his hand as if to say, okay, Peter, let me give you some of my faith. That's what I call the gift of faith. It's God in you doing the believing. Maybe you don't have the faith right now for your situation. Maybe you can't believe. You can't see your way out. You can't figure it out. But right now I challenge you to open your heart and let God do the believing in you. And he'll turn your life around. Jesus, I pray right now. I'm asking you, Lord, to Minister and to do a mighty work in the lives of your people. Truly, we invite you today to come inside. Do the believing for us. That we can turn the situation that we're facing around by the power of your name. And to see a mighty miracle in the name of Jesus. We serve an awesome God of wonders. Thank you so much for being with us today. And one more time. We're going to enjoy the wonderful ministry of the Magruders. I pray that God has blessed you and touched you, that today you've experienced your miracle. Once again, as Priscilla Magruder is singing, I encourage you, pick your phone up. Call 1-816-364-1687. Prayer partners are standing by to take your prayer request and to pray with you. You can call toll-free 1-888-888. 867-1687. God bless you as you experience your miracle from the God of wonders. Priscilla Murphy. We've learned to cover with those stories we tell How we're in revival again But when I try to imagine Still I cannot fathom This world dying in sin And our message still burn are we really concerned or have we grown tired of the fire we may fool a few by avoiding the truth but the dust on the altar can't lie 
Does anyone pray anymore? Oh, do we really care for the law? There is no need denying our children are dying when just out of reach stands the cross. And we think we're okay and that we've got it made. I'm afraid we've got it all wrong. There's a need in our day for a people to pray till the dust on the altar is gone. We may fool a few while avoiding the truth till the dust on the altar is gone. He put a new song in our heart. Amen. The Bible tells us Jesus, when he spoke about the woman who kept reaching for the judge and didn't fear God or man, and through her importunity, through her continued perseverance, she finally got that judge to judge in her favor. The Lord spoke a word, and he said, Shall not God? avenge his very own elect, though they cry unto him day and night. 400 years Israel cried out to God for deliverance. But when God said it's time, in one night he delivered possibly two million people, some theologians believe. But he continues in that verse and says, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith in this earth. Today, we do have faith in Christ. We have faith in the power that the blood that he shed. We have faith that the prayers that we pray today are prayers that not only will he hear, but he will answer. We're going to take some time now, and we're going to pray for some of the prayer requests that have been sent in by some of you listeners and those that have been watching this show. We're not just praying empty prayers. We're not just praying rhetorical prayers. We're praying prayers, believing that God is able to touch. He's able to deliver. So join me now as we pray and seek the Lord on behalf of these needs. Dave has wrote in. He's praying his family. We'll get back to church. Well, Dave, we, we feel your burden we're going to join with you right now in prayer. Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord, to touch Dave. Touch Dave's family and to minister and to draw them back to your fold. The truth is, Lord, that there's not a man in this world that can come to you unless you draw him. Without your drawing power, without your drawing spirit, we have no hope or chance to come to you. But thank you, Lord, that you are drawing in this hour. Thank you that you are still a merciful God that is not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. And I don't know, Lord, what's caused Dave's family to turn from you, or disappointment or heartache, but I know that Jesus never fails. Men may fail us, but you don't fail us. I ask you right now to reach into Dave's situation, bring healing comfort. I pray in your name. Lord, I pray for Shane. He needs help in finding summer work. I ask you, God, on behalf of Shane, to lift him. Open those doors that he may be able to find work. Lord, Margie has written in here today for her husband, for complete healing from a stroke. I know how devastating a stroke can be. 
our host, one of our guests today, Jonathan Suber, shared with us how devastating a stroke can be in his family. But God heals Margie. Margie, we're going to believe with you right now. Lord, I lift Margie to you. I lift her husband right now for the motor coordination and functions he may have lost from this stroke. You're a healer. We have faith and confidence in you that you'll touch and that you will deliver in your name. Raymond is written in and he needs healing from allergies. And this is definitely the season for it. We're going to pray with you, Raymond, right now. Lord, I'm asking you to touch Raymond. Minister in his life. And the power of the blood that was shed at Calvary to touch him and heal him of allergies. You're able to do this and we thank you for it. In your name, Jesus. Grace is written in. It's praying that her sister will be healed of cyst in a stomach. Grace, God's able to heal. And we're going to believe together right now with you. We're going to join in faith. Lord, right now, I agree with grace. I agree in Jesus' name that these cysts be dissolved. These cysts be removed by the power of the name of Jesus. We speak right now to these cysts. We command them in Jesus' name to be dissolved. Thank you for it, Lord. Aline is written in. She's praying for her son's salvation. She's listed her sons here, Clarence. Darren and Roger. I don't know, Clarence, Darren, and Roderick, if you're listening today. Maybe you are. Your mom loves you. Her prayers. I thank God for a praying mother. I thank God that in a period of time in my life when I was just a young man running from God, I couldn't run fast enough to get ahead of the prayers of my mother. I'd go to sleep at night and dream and hear her prayers. We're going to pray for you right now, Clarence, Darren, and Roderick. Father, in your name, I pray right now for these young men that you would reach them, wherever they're at. I ask God that you would even speak to them in their dreams. If in natural life they don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear the word, they don't want to receive the love that is being extended to them, that Lord, you'd speak to them even in the midnight hour, in the quiet time. Loose your angels right now. Hallelujah. Loose your angels, Jesus, right now to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation. I'm asking you, Lord, right now, wherever these young men are, let them just feel a burst of your love. Let them know, God, that you love them, that you have not given up on them. But right now, reach them. We ask these things. In your name, Jesus. Sandra, she's called in. She has leg problems, heart problems, circulation problems. Well, hopefully, Sandra, you've been listening to this show today. and You felt the power of God. You've heard the word. This word doesn't fail. You listen to me, Sandra. This word is true. We have not lied to you. Jesus heals. If you're listening, Sandra, lift your hands right now. I'm going to pray for Sandra. Right now, Lord, I pray for Sandra. I pray for her leg problems. I speak to the heart in the name of Jesus. I command the heart to be made whole. In Jesus' name. Healthy heart. Healthy heart. These circulation problems will be cleared up that she can receive health and strength. Jesus' name. Brenda, you've written in and you're a divorced mother with an eight-year-old child. Brenda, if you're listening today, you listen to me. Hear me today. God knows your struggle. I know you feel all alone. And you may feel like you're carrying the weight all yourself, but I got a word for you. Your father, your husband, which is your savior is there for you. And he's going to turn this bad situation around and bring good if you'll continue trusting him. I pray right now, Lord, for Brenda. Comfort her. Strengthen her. In the mighty name of Jesus. Letha has, has 
written in after praying for some time. Now her family's back in church and she's praising God. So Letha, we pray, we, we, we thank God and we, we rejoice with you. There's no greater joy than seeing your family. That, that, that's what the Bible wrote in Timothy. I have no greater joy than my sons and my daughters. That's a great joy to know your children. We rejoice with you, Letha. One more praise report. Rita, after praying with phone partner here at TBN, her finances did come in so she could move. Praise God. Let's just thank God for that. That's wonderful. Prayer works. And again, if you'll call 816-364-1687 or 1-800, excuse me, 1-888-867-1687, you can experience your miracle as prayer partners agree with you. In closing now, I'm going to pray that those that have been touched by the power of the word and the power of the... And I, I just... Sometimes I'm amazed at just the few things you put together and I shake my head and say, God, <laughs> look what you did with that mess. <laughs> look what you did with those little things we put together and those words. And I'm never amazed at the power of what God can do. God has visited us here today. Perhaps your heart has been touched. Perhaps you're not where you need to be with God. Maybe you feel a million miles away from God. Sir, ma'am, it doesn't matter how far you feel from God. It doesn't matter how destitute you feel or lonely or abandoned. If you could just bow your head right now. I want to pray for you. And God can draw you back to his own. You're his son. You're his daughter. You were created to serve God. You weren't created for sin. Everything about sin destroys you. Everything about sin wrecks your health and your family and your peace and your life. Serving God is beautiful. Serving God is worth it. Father, I pray right now that those that have straight from you will return. That they'll open their hearts and accept the blood and the sacrifice and the price that you paid on Calvary. That they'll receive you back into their lives. That they'll open their hearts to you. And realize you're a loving God that has never left us nor forsaken us. That has never abandoned us. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1B 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, Call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the press.